Are you a new boudoir photographer ready to book out your schedule as soon as possible? Well, in order to do that, you have to have a portfolio your ideal client can't resist. In this video, I'm breaking down four steps to create an irresistible boudoir photography portfolio. And be sure to stay to the end because my last tip makes a massive difference in being able to stand out from the crowd. You're gonna wanna take notes for this one. Hey, I'm Tracy and I help photographers stay forever booked out without the hustle. Be sure to grab my free guide outlining my five best tips for booking clients without Facebook ads. The first step to creating a beautiful boudoir photography portfolio as a beginner is to decide on your style of boudoir photography. Before I dive into this topic, I want you to know that your style can and will change over the years. But it's also important to have a style that your clients and potential clients can recognize immediately. There are three main types of boudoir photography styles. The first is dark and moody. Then we have light and airy and correctly lit. I think most photographers fall into one of these three. Personally, my style is correctly lit. Whereas my client Chelsea, she's more light and airy. And then my client Kristen, she's more dark and moody. Whatever style you choose, you just got to go all in. You can, of course, change as you grow, but to become recognizable, your photography must have a style. The second step to creating a beautiful portfolio as a beginner, and it's to find the perfect models to fill your portfolio. Portfolio. I personally know it's easy to find tiny blonde models. Your clients are not all going to be tiny and blonde though. And that means that you need to have women in your portfolio of different body types, skin colors, and hair colors. This way, no matter what your potential client looks like, they will find somebody that they relate to in your portfolio. Now you're probably wondering where to find these models. And my answer is Instagram. You can of course try a model call on your feed or story, but I honestly don't recommend this strategy. The ones following your Instagram close enough could be potential clients in the future. And they're probably gonna pay for a session in the future, so why would you waste that portfolio session on them? Let me show you a screen recording of me trying to find a model for a portfolio session. When you're looking for a model to photograph, where I look is just Instagram. It's easy to look through the photos of them too, so I'm gonna type in St. Louis model. I'll just go through and look for women who look like they would post what I want them to post as well. She looks fun to photograph. She looks like she is not local. So sometimes you'll end up on another photographer's page and you just kind of have to figure out who the model is. And it looks like she might be it. And then I'll go through and she actually looks like somebody I would want to photograph. And I think she would post what I want her to post. So that's something that you really want to make sure you find is somebody who is willing to post your photos. If you're going to put out the effort to photograph them, then you need to make sure that they are going to post the photos as well so that you get a little bit of quote exposure as well. I would just keep looking. I would probably reach out to her. And if you want to photograph five to seven models, I would reach out to 10 to 15 people to make sure that you actually get the five to seven models that you want. That's actually one of my photos from a long time ago. Some of these women are probably not still modeling. So just something to think about as well. She she looks like she would definitely be interested in what I'm offering as well. So like a model shoot and she would post. I don't know that hers are necessarily all local. She says she is Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri based though, but 25,000 followers typically, a lot of them are probably going to be local, but they all may not be. So something to think about as well. But yeah, that's what I do is I just go through and I try to find different body types, different hair styles and women who are willing to also post. I think she would too. So she would be a good one as well. One thing I want to mention is you need to find models who look like they would be willing to share your photos. I cannot say how important that point specifically is. The third step to creating a beautiful boudoir photography portfolio is to choose a day to photograph the sessions. Now, I'm thinking you want your portfolio ready to go ASAP, right? My recommendation is to choose one to three days and book all your sessions on that day. That way you're not only efficient with your time and time is money, you know, 
It's also gonna help you save money if you have to rent a studio space, an Airbnb, or a hotel. And speaking of locations, the fourth step to creating a beautiful boudoir photography portfolio is to choose a location to photograph these models. Here are some tips to finding an amazing location if you don't already have a studio space. Let's say you are trying to find an Airbnb to photograph sessions in your local area. It's easy to find it on Airbnb. The problem with finding them on Airbnb Airbnb is making sure that they are going to allow you to actually photograph sessions in there because sometimes they have some really weird rules. But the biggest thing you want to do is make sure that when you're looking at the different places that they have really pretty light and they're set up in a way that you would actually want to photograph sessions there. So sometimes you just need to find more luxury apartments because not just anything is going to work. This one looks pretty and it just needs to fit your style as well. So you just go in and look at the photos. Pretty simple. I mean, they do not have good photos. I will say that, that I like that wall. And it's, so it's always going to be your preference as well. So definitely start with Airbnb, look for the more luxury apartments. And then if you don't find anything there, go in and look for a hotel. We have some nice ones, but you also have to make sure that they are going to be not too expensive. I just go in and and I look at the photos. That looks like it'll be more luxury. Go into the rooms. Needs to fit your style, but I think the light would be really pretty. Yeah, I think it would be really pretty. I think it would photograph really well. And then you would just want to go see and make sure that it actually fits your budget as well. And now for step five of creating a beautiful boudoir portfolio, let's talk about setting up your actual portfolio. I've had some photographers ask where I actually house my portfolio. How do I send clients to it to make sure that they see it. And to be honest, this depends on where you are in your photography journey. If you're newer, you may only be on Instagram and Facebook at this point, or you might have already built a website. And of course, the best place to have your portfolio is on your website. But if you're not there yet, you can create albums in Facebook and direct your potential clients there or a gallery on shoot proof. Let me show you how I have my website set up. Now when talking about your portfolio, I want to talk about how you should actually set it up. In here, this is my website. You can see that I have different albums, but they're literal albums. Now, if you want to sell albums, you need to show albums. So that's why I have actual literal albums in my portfolio, as well as my personal favorites. Now, I just think that's very, very important. I want to show everything that I can shoot. I want to show lots of variety, lots of different body types and make sure that they see that. But I also want to make sure that they're thinking albums when they jump onto my website. So I want them to know that they are going to leave my studio with an album and that's why I have actual albums set up the way that I would sell them in my portfolio. Want to build a beautiful website for your boudoir studio, but maybe you're not sure how or where to start. Check out this website template my girls at NR Media created for my clients. The link is in the show notes. And finally, I want to leave you with a tip to guarantee you create a beautiful boudoir portfolio. As a beginner, you need to require your models to have professional hair and makeup. I promise you it makes a difference. I don't want to show you the difference because I don't want to hurt my model's feelings, but I promise it's going to help you level up your work. So just make sure that you require your models to have hair and makeup done professionally. This will absolutely help your portfolio stand out from the crowd. You can even go as far as to pay for it yourself, but if you're booking five to seven models, that could be anywhere from $700 to $1,500, depending on the price of hair and makeup in your area. So it all depends on where you are in your business and if you can afford it. And if not, just have your models pay for that small expense themselves. I mean, after all, they're getting beautiful photos in exchange, right? And that's how to create a boudoir photography portfolio as a beginner, one that will for sure help you book out your schedule. Be sure to subscribe to get notified on my next video, which is on boudoir photography trends that you need to know. While you wait for that, be sure to check out this video, five rules every boudoir photographer must follow. If this was helpful, let me know and give it a like. Lainey says bye. We'll see you next time.